Welcome. This video is about autoclave and boiler installs for mushroom cultivation. So if you're at the point where you want to be making mushroom spawn or you want to be making multiple batches in your sterilizer a day and you want to autoclave, well, this video is for you. Uh, one of the first things you're going to be looking for is a used boiler and autoclave. You can buy new, but they're going to be extremely expensive. That boiler right there is about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars new and this autoclave i believe is somewhere between thirty and sixty thousand dollars new um now i got that one from an old laundromat the the burner the boiler and i got the autoclave from a, a company called aaron and they are a equipment uh reseller so they they collect all kinds of used equipment and sell it you can also actually bought it off of ebay but that was the the vendor um, so yeah, shop around, find used, uh, look on your, you know, Facebook marketplace, Craigslist and eBay and see what you can find available. Once you have a boiler and an autoclave and that boiler is a little bit oversized and beats used for this autoclave. Um, so that's the other thing you got to match them. You got to make sure that th this one had a 300 K bur a boiler. I'm, I'm pushing about 550. I think it is a uh, thousand BTUs. So I have a little bit extra, but that's okay. Um, I can use it for other things as well. So once you have your pair, you're gonna wanna go ahead and start the install. Your first step is gonna be find a company that will do your, your boiler install. So look around for a heating appliance company that will, will do it all. Bring them out, have them look at the unit. If you're willing to do some of the work yourself, do it. Um, it's gonna save you a lot of money if you're doing the work yourself. Now, my boiler guy has been very helpful, uh, American Boiler. They, they've, uh, they've been able to show me what needs to be done, and then I do a lot of the work, and they'll come in and do the more technical stuff that I don't understand. Um, they charge a lot of money per hour, so you want to try to do as much as you can. Otherwise, if you're having them do the whole thing, you're going to be spending probably ten grand just in, in labor and parts and pumps and all that. Um, so besides the, the actual autoclave and the boiler you're also going to need a tank and that's for your makeup water and your condensate to come back into if you have condensate and then also you're going to need a pump uh, mine came with a pump but the pump needed to be uh, rebuilt it actually needs to be rebuilt rebuilt again they, they they messed it up apparently um that pump was just the parts to rebuild it was 900 dollars. the pump new is 1500 dollars to give you an idea and prices for all this stuff um, my exhaust, that's another thing you're going to need. So if you're pulling it out of an existing building, if somebody's demoing a building, see if you can get some of the exhaust. This was $1,800 in parts without even labor. Um, it's going to have to be double wall, unless you have a lot of clearance. It's going to have to be double wall. So that's actually triple wall up there. It's stainless steel, triple wall, and then double, double wall on the inside. And the reason for the double wall is to keep the flu temperatures up and to keep it to where the the heat doesn't radiate off of it and burn things um so you got to have your exhaust you got to have your tank your pump also you got to have your your gas your fuel so either you're going to run natural gas uh, i believe you all can also can run fuel oil or you can run propane i went natural gas i'm close to the grid my house is on the grid but i had to get a whole new line installed uh this is one of the first jobs i've done with the unistrut these braces and boy, I'm in love with them. They are, they are the coolest thing. You can use them like that. You can use them as braces. You can see right here, I did a brace, just a little stand. Um, they have a million and one uses. You can wall mount additional stuff. So the, the nice thing about it is like, you can see how I have another one behind it, the water line. I wish I knew about Unistrut earlier and used it more because I would have mounted everything on one big Unistrut. I could have had electric, water, gas, all on one Unistrut. Um, so enough about Unistrut, the, uh, the gas line got to be sealed up. Uh, you want to consult with your, your natural gas company where they want to do the drop for the, uh, for the actual meter. And I'll show you guys where my meter is. So I had a new pipe ran all the way from across the street. Actually, they, they went underneath the street and they did an auger and the first hundred feet was free and I paid for the rest. So I think I paid $5 a foot for like 50 feet. The meter install was free. So they put a meter in and uh, all I did was 
bring it to here and I had to agree with them on, you know, where, where do they want this to be? So I had to put that and then they came and installed the meter. Uh, that, that's like a two inch pipe that's enough to supply 10 times the amount of, of fuel that I need. So I'm good for a very long time. Uh, past that, once you get it in, you got to pressure check it. So you can do it yourself, but you're going to have to have a plumber come in, pull a permit, um, and then also get it pressure checked. And they're gonna wanna see it pressure checked with a certificate. There was actually a sticker on the other side before they put the meter on. They're gonna wanna see a certificate showing that it's been pressure checked and certified. And then they'll put the meter in. Um, so now you have, you have gas and you're good to go. The next thing you're gonna need to do is run your electrical. For, for my case, I had them do it because um, it was kind of a confusing mess what they had with all these e-stops. So I just had them do it. Um, and the pump, there's the, it goes to the pump, it goes to the e-stops. Anyways, they, they hooked all that up. Uh, once you have all that done, you're gonna want a regulator more than likely. So this is a high pressure boiler. This is up to 150 PSI. I'll be running it around 30 PSI. Uh, reason being is high pressure steam is very hot. When you regulate it down, it just reduces the pressure, not the temperature, so you have really dry steam and I'm trying not to have dry steam. So I'm doing 30 PSI, 30 to 40 PSI, and then 15 on the regulator. That regulator is a $700 regulator. Um, on that note, other valves that I had to buy were new relief valves. These are about $300 each. They have to be replaced every two years, I think, two or three years. They have date stamps on them and all kinds of certificates, ASME certified, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, those have to be replaced. And then uh, from there, you're gonna have to ha make sure that your, your autoclave works. So right now I'm actually working on it. My door needs to be adjusted. So I have that hung and chalked and blocked up and I'm trying to shim it, whatever. But yeah, so you gotta fix your autoclave, make sure that the seals are good, make sure that the latches are good. Um, if, any, if there's any cracks in the weld, you're pretty much screwed because then you gotta have an ASME welder come out and fix it. And it's gonna cost you a fortune. That's why a lot of people are throwing out old autoclaves is just, they're just worthless um from there you also get, you're gonna need your exhaust okay so uh this is a blowdown exhaust but i'm also using it as a gravity exhaust for the steam on the uh autoclave so if i want to do a gravity uh exhaust cycle which is you do steam at the top and then you open up your exhaust and the steam just fills the chamber and pushes out the exhaust all the air uh, you use a big pipe like this or a smaller pipe for that matter, but it has to be a pipe that goes to outside. So instead of doing two separate pipes, I went inch and a half inch, and then I went to inch and a half because um, that's what the marshal wanted, the inspector. Uh, and then the inch and a half goes outside the building, and I'm going to be going to a drum. Typically, your blowdown is going to be going into a sewer but you have to have a blender and that blender i guess is like a thousand or two thousand dollars i don't know i didn't buy one but typically you're going to want to blend it with tap water to bring it up below like 160 so you're not burning the city's uh, drain lines um so that's what your blowdown pipe is for and blowdown what happens is i'll go over more of this for when it comes to function but this is the install blowdown is basically you drain off a little bit every day or every week uh, just to get rid of your sediment and all that kind of stuff. Um, so once you have all that stuff set up, you have the fire marshal come out, who actually came out earlier too. The fire marshal is going to be the guy who makes sure all the clearances are right. Um, for my state, he does everything. He, the whole autoclave uh, and boiler is under his jurisdiction. So he's going to make sure that you have enough clearances uh, for working on it, that uh, the exhaust has the right clearances and the right specs. And then from there, he'll give it the certificate. Um, so, so far, just for those who are thinking about doing this, about how much money you're talking about spending, I would say 20 grand to 60 grand easy for an autoclave install. So just be ready for that. Um, it wasn't cheap getting all this done. It's, I'm still not done. So my number might be more than 20 grand. I hope it's not. Uh, and I'll have another video specifically on setting it all up and running it. But this video is more about the install. This is where I'm at right now. It probably doesn't cover everything. I'm probably missing things. But hopefully you liked it. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, 
subscribe, subscribe to my Patreon if you want to help support my channel and get more videos like this. And uh, thank you to all my supporters who are pledging. Uh, you help me motivate me to share my uh, content. I have a very busy schedule, and um, it's not always easy to get out here and make time to share with you mushroom heads the headache of installing or doing whatever I'm doing. So, uh, yeah. Have a good one. Keep on mushrooming. Take it easy.